standing, we're going to take the stand gun. In love and honesty to grow, and living just and true, great lofty height attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you may please have your seat and welcome. Come on, life here with you. Come on, life here. Come on, life here with you. On the unveiling of its new five story secretariat within 17 months, he sends his very best wishes to the Institute and says he will continue to lend support. Institute as he has done before. And he also wishes the Institute, the President and members, a very good celebration, continuous growth, and God's name. And he prays, he prays to Almighty God that this 50th anniversary celebration will be very, very successful and he wishes all of you the best of his Thank you, man. All right. Um, I would like to call in um, right now. Welcome. 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 I'd like to welcome the president of sister organizations, sister institutions. Starting from the president of the Nigerian Church of Engineers, my good friend, the president of the Land Surveying Institute, the Nigerian Church of Surveyors, my good friend, also. President Charles, <laughs> past president of the Nigerian Church of Engineer Engineer Rutemi, past welcoming of first our to start my address by calling this occasion. This occasion has testimony of capacity and prowess of the Nigerian political surveyors. So we all share in the reason why we are here today. It's a testimony of what the Nigerian court surveyors are doing and can still do more. So I'd like to acknowledge the grace of the Almighty God was made to be possible who has brought all of us here safely, who has made the weather to be very good to us today. Give him the glory. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of all fellows here, all past presidents of the Institute. And by no other past presidents, I keep the mega seminar. First President Samuel Yowde, First President Hussein Biko, First President Joseph Polusha Ajami, First President Francis Ayatola, First President Chief Felix Okereke. Vice President Brittany Oladapo. DOT members.
president, the first president and the only Madam President. when the institute was opportune to have our first female president, QS Messi Tokwashi in your chair, PPNA QS. And I was elected as a deputy president to understudy her, to learn from her feet. She she inherited this piece of land and a set of development plans for a proposed 10 story building, which was budgeted then at about 1.7 billion naira only. She put up a committee in place to saddle with developing the land. And guess who she chose as the chairman of that committee to carry that body? My humble self. We did the deputy president, who was who was still understudying her. She gave us that charge. She put up a committee. There was a committee put up comprising of seven number members with the powers to cohort more members to achieve that objective. So she set us out to then charge to make this possible today. We are grateful for your person after the charge. The committee had its first meeting, and when, it, when the task to be done was revealed, and also the financial status of the institute revealed to the committee members, the committee mesmerized and fizzled out, as it was obvious that raising billions of naira to build for NIQS was an Aquilian task. Out of the committee members, Only Mr. George D.K. Mr. George D.K., are you here? George D.K. Only Mr. George D.K. and I in the committee felt very strongly that the objective can be met. So rather than throwing the towel, the committee therefore recommended to the Institute that for many Reasons, including, yeah, Mr. George D.K. is here. Thank you very much. Because we, were all to, we started it together. Our committee, the committee therefore recommended to the Institute that for very many reasons, including the size of the land, which, was, which is barely 1,780 square meters, and the current environment, the institute should do only a five-story building whose construction must not exceed two years. And also for various reasons, and from our previous experiences of the Nigerian construction industry, Want to survey us, you are very, very uh, worried, knowledgeable, and worried about abandoned projects. And as should never be an abandoned project. The Institute, the Institute under the leadership of Madam President Yotia. The Institute for the leadership of Madam President Yotia agreed with the committee's recommendation and requested project consultants to redesign a five-story building. The project consultant 
the project consultant, the project consultant, Mr. CCP, ably led by architect Tayo Babalaki. Tayo Babalaki, can you please stand up to be recognized? Then was the design and now here was this five-story development. Madam President Yocha sought the approval of the general members of the institute, which is a constitutional matter. At the AGM in Portacourt in 2016, November 2016, the AGM gave approval as usual, but with comments on the design. Yes, we're approving, but the roof, don't do it that way, do it this way because we're all knowledgeable about construction and reading design. The comments were very valid because they were bothered also about costing use, life cycle costing. So we pass these messages to the consultants. The institute was able to fence and effectively secure the land from encroachers and local farmers that we paid compensations to for their crops that we're going to approve. So we settled those that were in the land. Now the current council came in into leadership in November 2017. And at its retreat in January 2018, unanimously the executive council agreed and took the challenge to develop this land. May I recognize and thank the members of executive Members of Executive, NIQ West, can you stand to be recognized? The Deputy President, <laughs> Madam Mohamed Abato, Vice President, yes. Vice President, Yemi Shunubi, yes. The Secretary General is always on duty, pardon me. Debo Oyile, very active. The Treasurer, who found the resources for us, to get to where we are. Yes. Musa Salao. Other members of council. Uh, yes, please all rise up. I can't start. We are about 24. If I should count, if I start mentioning your names, you will not finish with you. But we all, this is all I uh, doing. Yes, Professor Kabir Bala, the president of Council of, Reg Council of Registered Builders of Nigeria, come on, is here with us present. Like I said when I was starting, this is not 50th anniversary speech. I cannot give 50th anniversary speech. I was not around in 1969. So, I will allow past presidents to talk for us later in today and in the evening at the dinner to tell or to give us those uh, 50th anniversary speeches. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it. After 50 years, are we not going to say hands again? Past president, how many of us will be here? Eh? They will be thanking us. <laughs> Whatever you have to our past president. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about going into the unveiling of the structure proper. And I'd please like you to pay attention to, uh, to please lead us with this unveiling progress. Please, a round of applause as we continue. Geophilos, Yaku Budanjuma. I do unveil this building to the glory of God and to the... and to humanity. And pray God that this building will be used in activities to so further develop because of this country. A round of applause, please. Continue on the first floor. Thank you. Microphone, microphone, microphone. This plaque was officially unveiled by the former Minister of Defense, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, this day, October 
will be at least one of the anchor tenants. So we are sure of, uh, the QS Library and Airquest can meet here and the uh, management will be impossible. But if not, we have to be close to get on and make it. Thank you for conference and for meeting, letting us meet here. But we are not going to just keep conference room empty. empty. It should be rented out to whoever wants to use it for arbitration or for having project or whatever. For rent? Yeah. Delhi or Havana, or Delhi, they rent them out. The book launch, the future. Second staircase. So before he starts telling us that we are not that uh, <laughs> health and safety company, yeah. the second staircase on this side, on this side, so from top to down, even to the basement. So, uh, and uh, we'll just tarry a little while on this floor, so that the chairs can be arranged for us. The chairs we use outside can be arranged for us also on the first floor. So, but in the meantime, this is a letable, uh, a typical letable floor. Thank <laughs> you. 
time experience uh, where we did the project and uh, record time, quarter million 18 months. We first are finished in 12 months. But the other five months, we are fighting like many weather and some other associated difficulties in the construction. So it was quite long time on target. And uh, I think we have done a fairly good job as we can hear the testimony. Can you tell us about the cost of the well, the cost, you know, this is a project uh, done by Nigeria Schools of Works. You know, they have their, they have their own privacy for them to test the project. We are virtually level contractors and uh, the contact them is not going to be as close to them anymore. Standing with me is from my left is Akiten Tokwe, the architect of the project. This is uh, Jennifer Omale, she's a conscious of your own project. And this is George. ACC, she's from Association Force for Zotar. And then me, my name is Otaru Joseph from Josephata and Partners. And then George, also US from Josephata and Partners. We supervise the project from foundation to where we are starting. Yeah, well, how, how yeah, today is a, is a day of joy, and we thank God for my, uh, making this day an effort event. Because without God, we don't have achievement. When we came here, it was just like what you see behind me. So the place was cleared, and gradually, gradually, we started to open. Here we are, we are seeing the structure standing. So the God we know what we do. And the facilitator asked them, please, why do we have the highest concentration of wealth? Of course, the attendant said, some said uh, in the major city centers, Wall Street, ABCD, somebody said African diamond mines, and so on. And the person said, no, the cemetery. Because a lot of people died with wonderful and huge ideas that would have created and changed minds. Because they refused to put them down. So we thought that it was necessary to put down our history, most especially after going through some slight crisis and challenges and there were some claims and counter claims on who did what or who did do what. There is um, a historian or rather a couple who are historians, Ariel and Will Durant. The students who know them, they've written quite a number of books. In one of the books, The Age of Faith, they said the historian always oversimplifies and hastily selects a manageable minority of facts and faces out of a crowd of souls and events whose multitudinous complexity he can never quite embrace or comprehend. So we have a history book, which may not cover everything, but at least substantially it has captured the essence of our journey to today. The, the history book was written by a professor of history, Enoch Oedele. Now the choice of Enoch Oedele at that time was that one, he's a professor of history, so he write a book professionally. Two, he has a daughter who's a conservator at postgraduate level. So you'll have sentiment for conserving. And we thought he'd be the best person to write our history. And that was what informed the choice of Professor Oedele. Professor Oedele, you're here? 
Like it wasn't an easy challenge for him. One track, especially the past presidents, beg sometimes to cajole, sometimes to, you know, and sometimes had to, and it takes several journeys to be able to get an interview and clarify certain facts. But how did all this start? When I was going through the archives of the institute as a president, I realized that during the tenure of uh, late Chief Ishiya Dizho, he asked Chief Balogu, the first president, to please scribble down something for the history of this institute. At least the much he could remember. And he did. The second thing was one day by the chapter of the NIQS was uh, holding an uh, annual event. They invited Chief Vincent Aga, who was the first assistant secretary general of the NIQS, to also tell them the history of the NIQS. That also he put down some. The board, the Country Service Research Board, and uh, President Duku also commissioned some lecturers to put down something like the story or the history of conserving education in Nigeria. And uh, Professor Michel, I think he's here, he chaired the committee. That also was there. And I said, look, if we don't have a comprehensive history of the institute, uh, we don't want the treasures of conservation to be in the graveyard in some years to come. So we are lucky, quite a number of the players, active players, are still alive and strong. We thank God for that, and we are able to extract the much we need. Now, individual presidents and players and leaders can write their own stories. But this is a story that we have that will comprehensively present our common position. The committee that run the project, it wasn't me alone, it was the committee that was set up. Uh, every member of the committee played a significant role. Uh, the vice president of the institute, well, he wasn't the vice president then. Uh, uh, Shonibi, Olaibi Shonibi, as a member. Uh, former Secretary General of the Institute, Phoebe Balogun, another passionate member. The head of the Vice President Seven in ABU Zaria, uh, Associate Professor Plomri, was Secretary of the Committee. And there was George Alabo, who was also a member, who was Secretary of Marketing and uh, Corporate Affairs. These are the people that managed this process for the four years that it took to produce this book. So today, I am honored and glad to say we are presenting uh, this book to uh, the members of the NIQS, and uh, we, uh, we believe sincerely that the book would represent substantially our journey to date, especially and they didn't know us. So we look at one of the books, got their contacts and call them. And uh, they have produced these books at record time. So we also want to thank the publishers for this work. <laughs> to suggest also to the incoming council and subsequent councils that will come that they should use this book as a lesson to where they want to take the institute in the next 50 years. Because according to the same uh, Ariel and Will Durant, the couple, you know, they describe uh, history is the present. Sorry, the past, the present is the past role of for action. And the past is the present and folded for understanding. So I want the next the incoming councils that will come after us to look at the, the trend build and please improve upon them. I want to thank you all for being here and I hope you will support the process of setting out our history. And I want to believe that 
other professional bodies would also look at what we have done and also try and uh, copy so that the history of our various professions will be documented for future. Uh, I recall what Kualesha Inka said. He said, forget the past and forfeit the future. Distinguished gentlemen, the chairman of the case, Mr. President, I sincerely thank you and I welcome you all to this formal presentation of the book. Thank you. Sorry, um, there is also a video clip, and these video clips are going to be in flash drives. But I'm going to show just some slight portion of the video clips of uh, some of the reminiscences of uh, our leaders, and then whoever wants to buy the clip also is available later. Thank you, round of applause once again. The media, are you ready with the audio clips?
I screamed all the time. But it is hilarious. As um, I used to hear them laugh over fees charges. When we see the fees charged by architects, and we see our meager amount, uh, as Bashir Tayyama would say, in Hausa, I learned that we can get back. Other very, I want to tell you, it's a very noble profession. If I will come back again, I will be a practitioner of it. I'm very happy and I'm very proud to be a practitioner of it. And I will tell you why. In the discharge of one's duty, if you see a well-trained quantity surveyor, there can be no word called failure. You can see from the discharge of the duties of some of our colleagues that have been given public office, for example, General Garba Ali Mohammed, former Minister of Works. My friend, Rumet, well, he doesn't call me his friend anyway. I was, I was stop there. My roommate, I'm professional colleague, and friend to your former president, Malan Hussaini Diko, Malan Nasir Erufai. <laughs> Even though his greatest critics cannot but agree and join with me that he has performed excellently well as a minister of the federal government. This we must be proud of. He is being able to turn the events in this city to such a point that it can never go back to where it used to be. We must commend them for having done so much. And indeed, the discharge of our duties is very paramount to the development of this country. If you remember, AFRI Projects Consortium, I dare not call them with their acronyms for political reason. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. <laughs> and you know how they were able to turn the events of things in this country. In every field of development, infrastructural development, in agriculture, in water resources, in what have you, that they have intervened in medicine, education, will be able to see very credible, positive development. We must commend them because they did very well and they are our colleagues, led by my younger brother, friend, Madam Ahmed, Salihijo, blessed memory, with Murtala and with their other colleagues. We thank you for making us proud, for making us happy. I'm so happy with your performance personally, and I'm sure Nigerians will remain very thankful for a very long time. For the first time, to be read by various groups of people, but not only to be read, for it to be instructive to all of us to learn and for the learning to be useful to all of us. This is the only way forward. We must move forward. We must stop complaining. And finally, before I do the last thing I should do before I leave here, I want to beg of all of you. I have heard in the background from Murtala which is truly what is happening. We build too many foundations of uncompleted projects. You need to be strong and resilient when you are in position of responsibility to know what you can do and what you cannot do. And what you must do, you must do it to its conclusion, logically. If you don't do that, you become a failure. Because we will not eat foundation, neither will we eat uncompleted projects. A lot of this comes with politicians. 
we have a problem of weakness. We start this project and we will not continue, we will not complete it. I will tell you one stupid little story. The Kaduna bypass was meant to be done in one year. I was very sad when one of my in-laws is the contractor to the bypass. He approached me to speak to the government to give them money so that they continue the project. I was shocked that the project is not completed. Why? Because this is a project that we should start and finish on time. A bypass should not take over 10 years. Please, whatever project you want to embark, and I advise all politicians that are going to be listening, in the name of the Almighty God, try to be strong in your character, to agree that whatever job you start, you want to finish it, both in terms of quality and quantity, and ensure that things are done for the good of the people. It's no good for us, we are starting this road, we are starting that road, because you want to satisfy the yearnings and aspirations of the various electors. At the end of the day, you do none of them to its logical conclusion. And nothing is beneficial to none of the communities. Please, we should be strong enough to make sure we are conclusive in our projects. It is very... Yesterday, when Montana brought this, incidentally, When Murtala Ali brought this book, um, Senator Oji Kalu, former governor of um, uh, Abia State, my former colleague, visited me with his uh, little enterprise at about 10 25. And then we went talking, and he said to me, Because I am coming, he wants to come with me today. But I don't know the address. I'm not allowed us to bring him. So as we were meandering around the road, road towards here, it's an addressless thing. So I call him on arrival here to tell him that it's an addressless place. I cannot make you to come through this place. So he told me to buy his book for two million. So I collect your two million ahead of time. All right. To be part of this stream of the Nigeria Institute of Participants. I may not be fit if not for the uh, attire I'm wearing to stand before senior colleagues of uh, this caliber uh, because uh, I'm too young to be in their midst. But thank God for whatever God designed, I can't it uh, I wish to express my sincere happiness to be part of the 50th anniversary of the Nigerian Institute of Tissabers and uh, the book launch of this uh, great institute. Um, I feel struck of words because there are a lot of people that I'm seeing who I very much respect and indebted, indebted to them with much of thanks while I was in the quantity survey practice. However, I wish to use this opportunity to thank them very much for whatever contribution they have made in my career service as a country civil, which I'm proud to be one. And I'll never be proud to be one. 
despite the attire. Uh, there are times I will keep the attire aside and still be a participant. Thank you very much for uh, making me part of this history. I wish the Nigerian Institute of Quantitative uh, a long life and uh, progress. Thank you. Everybody comes and start. Gravity will be a problem, so let me prepare to write. It is indeed a great pleasure for the surveyors in Nigeria. When I say surveyors, I'm referring to the land surveyors. <laughs> um, if you look at the Holy Book of the Christians, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, and God surveyed the firmament. So surveying is the first profession in the world. <laughs> and if you come nearer to Nigeria, the Nigerian institution, not institute, every other person is saying institute, institute, but we say it is institution. The Nigerian Institution of Surveyors was formally formed in 1934. It was only in 1966 it changed its name to what it is. Mr. President, you have created that great synergy between you and most of us, especially in the great industry. And we think we should continue from here. We always meet at functions, at castle, at ABBN, and we are going to see your style of leadership. You would like to break ground, so I'm therefore not surprised that from being deputy president to president, this kind of edifice has been put up in two years. It is something a good number of us have to learn from you. Well, that reminds me, the Nigerian Institution of Surveyors was given land in Kayami in 2015 and up to now it has not Unfortunately, I have not succeeded in facing it, but I'm leaving office next June. I don't like me to, but I hope my deputy will be able to continue for the life and build something like this. Now we have BIS, um, Building Information Model, which now brings all of us in the building industry together. Technology has created this problem for each and every one of us by breaking grounds. All the boundaries have been broken, but there are still core areas where each professional body should hold strong to. PIM will further consolidate our synergy and add value to what we deliver to the Nigerian public. I was not asked to come and launch, neither was I asked to come and uh, make any remarks, but the Nigerian Institution of Surveyors would like to get a copy of this book for 500,000 members. The fellows of the this great institute that are present here, our real father, and your excellency, please let me stand by existing protocol. Now, for me, I'm indeed very grateful to the President of the Nigeria Institute of Quantum Surveillance. Like I said, my brother, Papa Fleming, Quantum Surveillance, um, Papa Fleming. Now, for me, when I came into the office and I saw a very big invitation card, containing, well packaged. I was so, in fact, that's the best invitation card I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so, 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 when I looked at it and knowing what myself and himself has discussed on paper, I thought to myself, now QS 
Papa Femi, Oluwale Onashile, FNIQS, the president of the Nigeria Institute, Institute of Pont Savios, is indeed a great man. A great man because he did what our son, you know, did. Our son was a person, a president of a former president of Egypt. One day he just woke up and decided that he was going to Israel, that he would go to Tel Aviv to meet the then Prime Minister. So I thought to myself, I'm indeed honored to be here. I thank you very much, Mr. President. It was, uh, to me, having your relations, supporting your leadership, and they make a profound impact by coming to London for the anniversary. 50 seems to be a reoccurring decimal this year. I had to attend Ghana Institution of Surveyors who celebrated their 50 in April. And uh, whether you believe it or not, we are celebrating, I'm celebrating 50 years of leaving secondary school this year. <laughs> The year 2019 is a very important year, and important for Ponte Sabir. We've done extremely well. It's very heartwarming to see the history book being realized, and of course, for another edifice to rise in the name of Nigerians of Ponte Sabir. The model that was adopted when we first had this first sectariat in Lagos was to hijack a developer and say, come, please take it, use it, give us whenever you finish. Um, and we had to be tenants, so to speak, for almost 25 years or 30 years when it was in occupation. But that was the model that would be uh, adopted to build the sectariat. But as soon as we built that, that established set a tone which has helped NIQS to be able to be among the big uh, league of professionals. Today, I want, on behalf of Commonwealth Association of Surveying and Land Economy, congratulate NIQS and especially President Onoshile. He's my very good boy. Very good boy. <laughs> championing this um, important project. NIQS is making a, turn, is at a significant turning point. For those who are coming behind, this is your most read book so that it can help you to lead the institution in the right direction for the next 50 years. I congratulate NIQS. Uh, well, fortunately, um, I've been called upon to represent um, past presidents, uh, though I'm the least of them all, I'm sure they won't mind uh, what I will say on their behalf. Uh, on the behalf of, behalf of the past presidents, I want to commend the president of the Nigerians of Quantis of Wales and his ESCO, and the president of the Quantis of Wales Registration Board for two things. This edifice and the history book, both of which have been unveiled today. I, I want to specially comment on the two because they drove the two processes that culminated into what we are witnessing today. Um, Alhaji Muazu, His Excellency, stood here. By the way, he's my, um, he was my classmate. He's a small boy, just like a small boy. <laughs> Even in school, he was very smart. He was smart enough to tell us that he's not the chief launcher. But 
whatever English you use, you are the chief launcher, you must get us the money. <laughs> As the chief launcher. <laughs> you can't do anything, you know. Even though it was uh, excellence, he is still excellence. So we give God the glory for what has happened today. It is God's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. We, the past presidents, are very proud of these two achievements. But permit me to say a little bit about uh, the, the two projects. We are proud that this project has been delivered, these two projects have been delivered to time with this specification and within the budget. And that's what we, the project appointed surveyors are known for, good project managers. Four years ago, um, where we were at number 20, uh, South Zungu Street, we were told to quit. And that was when I just took over. So we had to quit. We got new, uh, a new place just uh, some few houses away. Luckily, so we didn't have to change the street number. Two years after again, the landlord said we should quit. So we, at the executive council, we decided, why should we be moving from one rented apartment to another? When we are going to survey us, are we the poorest professionals? The answer was no. If we don't put our head to it, there's no way we can do it. It is when you face challenges that you look for a way out, solving your, uh, you know, mitigating your challenges. And so, uh, we embarked on the, this project, and to the glory of God, today, we may no longer be tenants, but also landlords. time and allowed me to their library and to get some information from them. I think the last person I interviewed is General Ihe Jirika. I visited him in his house and I interviewed him and uh, we exchanged some pleasantries. So all the people I interviewed, I came to see them as respectable and honorable people. So I regard the profession of quantity surveying as a very noble profession. Mr. President, your profession is a noble profession. Thank you all for your assistance, your support, and so on in the production of this book.